that's something I've always found fascinating is that you've got the human element, which is definitely hugely informal, sloppy. We are not, we are not formalized um, creatures. We're very, very associative. Um, um, and then what developers have to do is bridge the gap between this incredibly sloppy world that somehow has form and shape, but is not necessarily rigid and prescriptive and with well-defined boundaries. And then you kind of shift into the world of programs, which have exactly the opposite nature. They are highly formalized. You know, it's, it's a programming language is a formal structure. There's no kind of like, well, maybe today I'll compile it or maybe you don't. And if it looks like that, you know, you have a problem, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, but it, there's, there's kind of, there's, there's a, and what you've got to try and do is build a system for the kind of the soft squishy uh, thinking and soft squishy beings out of stuff that is really quite different. Um, and yes. the nature of these two, bringing them together. I think that for me, that's one of the things I find fascinating, but it's probably also for many people without them realizing is what's interesting about software development is there is the rewarding aspect of what some things that are solved and elegant. And it's just like, that's done. But then there's the other element of like, and how does it fit with the world, which is also quite exciting. Um, and also the discoveries that you make is just like, well, I thought this was a really good abstraction, but now I truly understand what's being built. I don't think that's the right abstraction. That doesn't mean it's a bad abstraction. It's just not the right abstraction for this system. It's just now I understand yeah, yeah, yeah. how it's evolving through time and the kind of the nature of changes that the, uh, the client wants from it or the things we've discovered from, uh, from sprint to sprint. It's just like, oh, okay, I keep touching this, keep changing it with that optimism. Oh, I'll get it right this time. But actually, actually, maybe I'm learning something deeper. The fact that this is not the idea that I thought it was, um, and I need a different point of view. Um, you know, that, and, uh, and, you know. And, and, and and that's that's not a side effect or an accident. That's the nature yeah. of of the game. It, it's this exercise. It's this continual exercise in learning, in which we en enhance our understanding of the problem that we're trying to address, and the nature of our solution. A solution that we're trying to apply to it and yeah. and and it seems to that's one of the things that i've very very strongly come to believe that that's a complete cornerstone of our discipline yeah. and we optimize to be able to maintain our ability to make changes when we learn new stuff so uh, yeah. so I, I i refer to it as this kind of one of one of the ways of kind of pragmatically informally adopting the philosophy of science to software so yeah. i want to i want to consciously start out assuming that i'm going to make a mistake and i'm going to be wrong and yeah. then i'm going to look at ways in which i can falsify my my guesses uh, along yeah. the way and that's a yeah. much stronger way of learning than assuming that my design's perfect and it's going to be right and i'm never, never going to have to correct it again yeah. I've, I've found the one true way, you know, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> you know it's, I, I, I'm always reminded, you know, that there's a, this is years ago, but I had a client where I had, I, I'd become uh, over successive visits. I'd become familiar with the nature of their system and what they were doing. And they one day asked me, well, we love you to design this kind of like subsystem and it's got these performance and strengths and stuff like that. And we've got the suggestion for the basic idea of the design. And I kind of said, I don't think the memory manager is going to like that. I don't think that's, that's, I don't think that's going to work. I don't think it's going to meet the performance requirements that you need. Um, I think there's going to be issues with it. And then I made a suggestion and they said, are you sure? And I said, well, I, I think this is going to work better. I think this will work better with uh, memory allocation on this platform. I think mm -hmm. that for the, you know, you're, you're dealing with peak, they basically wanted to deal with peak demand in some way. You know, we can't handle yeah. all the data, but what we need to do is spool it off so we can handle it later. And I, and I said, I think the way I'm proposing will work this way. And then I tossed in another idea because um, I'm not really happy until I've got three ideas. You know? <laughs> so they gave me one. I, uh, I, had, yeah. I had a preferred one. I didn't yeah. think there's a work. I had a preferred one, and you know, and uh, and then I had a third one, and I thought the yeah. third one was okay. I thought it was better than their suggestion, but I didn't think it was great. Yeah. Um. And you know, they gave me a couple of days. You know, they 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 fed me coffee. You know, gave me a meeting room, all the rest of it. But my favorite thing is one of the, one of the guys came in one day. Um. You know, the first or second day, and he came in and he saw I had an ID on my screen. I had code. There were curly mm -hmm. brackets happening. And he said, "Oh, we didn't expect you to code." And it's just I kind of looked at him. It's just like, well. 
how do you think I was going to do this? Sit here and make it for three days, um, you know, and come up with the pure design. You know, just a moment of light was like, no, I have designed it. You know, I, you know, I am the architect. This is the matrix here, or whatever. Here is, here is the word. Here is the solution. You know? yeah. And it's just like, no, I'm trying each one of these out. I want to see what it feels like in code. Um, and also I'm, I'm going to do some basic basic performance analysis. No, 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 yeah. not too big. Just to get a kind of order of magnitude feel for this stuff. And, and, and I and I wrote it up. And the funny thing is, it was I wrote it up, and I, it's only in hindsight that I realised I'd written it up like an experimental report. You know, um, here's here's the situation. Here's what we've got. Here's the various proposals. Here's how we've run it. And here's here's the yeah. here's the results and recommendations for future work. Um, yeah. But what I found is that I. I was right and I was wrong. I was right. Their approach wouldn't meet their requirements. I was also yeah. right that my my preferred approach would meet their requirements. Yeah. But I was wrong in that my kind of like third throwaway option, that was outstanding. It was way ahead of me, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I would not have known that by meditating upon it. That had to be made real. That had to be yeah. brought into the world. And to actually, to, to, you also have to kind of mess about with it. In other words, the, the yeah. very act of, I mean, and you, you mentioned kind of like, solving mathematical problems for fun. And that's one of those interesting things is that I, I'm guilty of having done similar things in the past. Um, um, and it, it's kind of fun. Um, but the thing is, that until you've done it, you don't know how you're going to do it. You've got some ideas yeah. and you're going to crack away at it. And in that sense, there is a sort of a creativity. You know, it's, it's mathematics is not necessarily empirical, but it is certainly creative. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try this. Oh, I don't work. Oh, what about this one? Oh, what about this? Yeah. And you've got that and and software just pushes it that little bit further to bring it into the world and say, well, yeah, but how does that work in the world as opposed to yes. in abstract abstract space? And that is a really important and that idea, I think it's a really interesting one, because what we're doing is we're bringing together the idea of problem solving and creativity, um, but with something that somebody else is going to experience and they're going to work with it. Some that somebody else is either going to be another developer experiencing the code, or it's going to be um, an end user experiencing what is this system like? Yes. And so there's a kind of a feedback. You don't necessarily get that uh, quite the same from something that is mathematical. Um, uh, there's a kind of a sense there of, is this appropriate for the world that we want as opposed to, you know, yeah, this is, this is fine. It's a nice idea, but um, uh, it's a case of like, what is its context? You know, I can yes. draw you a picture of a house and I could ask you, is this a good house? And and you could say, yeah, that looks good. And then I could say, well, here's the hill that I'm going to put it on. And you say, well, you didn't say anything yeah. about the hill. <laughs> you know, that's completely a terrible house now. And, you know, the context absolutely matters. And and I yeah. think that sometimes we, we kind of, there's this kind of sort of maths envy that sometimes uh, takes over people. And sometimes there's that idealism because software does, you know, as I said, there's these two different spaces, the, the, the sloppy human one that is filled with economics and, 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 and ill-formed thoughts. And the fact that the realization that no matter what we do with any development process, people always talk about prioritizing requirements, stuff like that. Uh, humans don't walk around with a list of priorities that we don't actually, that's, that's not a thing that happens in the brain. We don't have lists yeah. like that. Um, um, and you so have my wife. <laughs> I have, I have. And she's very organized. She, she, but that's, I'm going to say that when people, but that's a thinking tool. That A list becomes a thinking tool. Yes. When you yes. provoke a human just randomly, they don't have a list. They have to create a list. And yes. it's going to be drawn from whatever is available. It's, a, it's an availability um, bias there. Um, whatever is available um, at that particular point in time. Um and, it, and unless they've already really thought through, oh, I'm going to use lists like this, unless they've actually structured that in there, then that's not the naturally the way they think. Most people yes. don't sit there thinking like, we want a product and I'm going to think in terms of these requirements. No, you're probably thinking in terms of other things that are your skill space. And so when we provoke humans into, oh, I need a formal structure, give me a priority list. That's not how they actually think, but they can learn to move yes. towards it but that doesn't mean they're thinking genuinely like that and then we have this associative mess which is also where all the creativity comes from and then we have this kind of like hard edge stuff which is very uncompromising you know there's no negotiation with the compiler it's not a matter of opinion whether or not this this works or not and then we're trying to do all of this so we've got this all these different strands of of, of creativity yet bounded by a particular formalism